You are watching Dark Script, IT and Infosec tutorials. Welcome back to Dark Script, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining yet another offensive security episode. Today, I want to cover a very exciting topic. A few days ago, I was asked by a former colleague of mine to explain and demonstrate the idea behind MITM attacks, or man in the middle attacks, specifically ARP poisoning. And I think it was a great idea, because apparently many beginners seem to find it a bit challenging to understand ARP poisoning. But the truth is, it's not that complicated if you have at least some basic knowledge and understanding of layer 2 and layer 3 networking. So in this video, I'm really hoping to shed some light and demystify the ARP poisoning attack for you. That said, as always, I like to begin with some theoretical demos and illustrations. So before we jump into the ARP poisoning attack itself, let's try to understand what ARP actually is. So, ARP, or Address Resolution Protocol, is a network protocol that stands somewhere between layer 2 and layer 3 addressing, and its function is very simple. It's used to map an IP address to a physical address, or a MAC address, within the local network. So imagine that a device needs to communicate with another device on the same LAN, yeah? The same local area network. It can be a server, it can be a smartphone, it can be a laptop, it can be anything. So this device will start from sending something called an ARP request to learn the MAC address associated with the target IP address. The device with the matching IP address will normally respond with its MAC address to the requesting device and allow direct data transfer at the data link or the layer 2 network because in a LAN, devices communicate on layer 2 using MAC addresses. IP routing is only required when one LAN needs to communicate with another LAN or another subnet or the internet. Anyway, let's go through each step one by one, just to understand how the protocol works. In the first stage, a device on a local network needs to send data to another device, but it only knows the target device's IP address, let's say 192.168.0.52. In stage 2, the same device will start from checking its local ARP cache, also known as ARP table, to see if the MAC address for that IP is already known by the device. And just to clarify, every device that knows how to communicate over a TCP IP network has something called an ARP table. This table is used to store the mappings between IP addresses and their corresponding MAC addresses on the local network. And it allows devices to quickly find MAC addresses for known IP addresses and reduces the need for repeated broadcast ARP requests. You can see on my screen an example of my ARP table. It shows all the IP interfaces on my computer and their local cache. So for example, you can see that my interface 192.168.0.165 stores in its ARP cache the routers or the default gateway's IP address, which is in our case 192.168.0.1, and of course its corresponding MAC address, which is this 48-bit hexadecimal address on the right. Cool. So the device is checking its local ARP cache for the MAC address associated with 192.168.0.52. In stage 3, if there is no mention of the MAC address in the ARP table, the device will send something called an ARP request, an ARP broadcast message, asking basically the, the whole network, whoever's got this IP address, tell me your MAC address, I want to speak to you. Now, in stage 4, the device with the matching IP address will receive the request and then reply with an ARP response containing its MAC address. Pretty simple. And then the original device will receive the MAC address, add it to its ARP table for future use, and it can now start sending data directly to the target device. Now, if you're not worried yet, let me tell you this. The problem with ARP is that it wasn't designed to be very secure to begin with. There is nothing preventing me as a malicious user from pretending to be someone else on the network and then poison the ARP tables of other devices by injecting malicious entries and rerouting all the traffic through my attacker's machine. I know it sounds a bit confusing, so try to imagine this. I want to exploit the ARP protocol and capture all the live traffic between an end device and a router. And I want to stand in the middle, basically. I want to stand in between and listen to all the communication happening between these two. This is known as a man-in-the-middle attack, or in short, MITM. I think CompTIA changed the definition to something a bit more inclusive, like um, 
on path attack, I believe. But I personally think MITM sounds more badass. Anyway, let's assume that my router's IP address is 192.168.0.1, just to keep it really simple. And the victim's machine is 192.168.0.10. Let's say it's some laptop plugged to the switch or whatever. And my attacker's machine is on the same subnet and has been assigned the address 192.168.0.20. So the two targets already know each other. They talk very often, as you can imagine. The router knows that 192.168.0.10 has the MAC address of AABBCCDDEEFF, and the laptop knows that its default gateway's address, the router, has the MAC address of 11223345566. By the way, no MAC address looks like this. I'm really just trying to simplify it for you. This is what their ARP tables would look like typically after a standard ARP resolution. These are legitimate entries. Now, my attacker, the 192.168.0.20, has the MAC address 123456AABBCC. So, how does the ARP cache poisoning happen in real life? It always starts with the attacker enabling IP forwarding on their machine. And this is very important because IP forwarding allows the attacker to route traffic between devices on the network and then capture, intercept, or tamper with the communication flow. Without IP forwarding, the attacker can still poison the ARP cache, but they won't be able to intercept or to manipulate the traffic, if that makes sense. Then the poisoning can begin. The attacker will start sending malicious ARP responses to these two devices containing incorrect L2 to L3 pointers. It will basically force the laptop to map the router's IP address to the attacker's MAC address and the router to MAC the laptop's IP address to the attacker's MAC address. And the result will be that each time the laptop and the router want to communicate with each other, they will send the traffic to the wrong MAC address, the attacker's machine. A clear indicator of ARP poisoning is when you look at your ARP table and see two different IP addresses mapped to the same MAC address. When you see duplicate MAC addresses in your ARP cache, it means someone is fooling around in your network. And at this point, you can open Wireshark, start capturing the traffic and apply your filters, and just lean back and wait for the machines to start interacting with each other. But in most cases, you will see TLS encrypted traffic, which you will need a private key to decrypt, of course, but you can still hope to capture some clear text traffic like HTTP, uh, FTP, or any insecure variant of LDAP or SNMP. That's our poisoning in a nutshell, in theory. Now, I know you want a live demo and I just feel like breaking something, so <laughs> let's uh, open our lab and demonstrate a live ARP poisoning attack. But before we do that, a quick disclaimer. As always, this demo is intended for educational purposes only, so you better not misuse it for naughty stuff, especially you, Ron Curtin. And another disclaimer, or more like a warning if you will, do not perform this attack against your own router. Because about a year ago, I tested this attack in my home network without knowing how amazing my Microtik router was, and apparently it has some very clever IPS or intrusion prevention system component that stopped the attack and brought down the whole network. So I had to clear the cache and wasted about half an hour. It was a real pain. So if you want to play around with this, just use a virtual router like VYOS. I highly, highly recommend it. It has a very simple interface. It's very simple to set up and it's a very stable open source router and firewall software. Cool, so this is my target Windows Server 2019 machine. Let's open PowerShell to give you some more context. The target IP address, the victim IP address is 192.168.1.155. The default gateway is 192.168.1.1. If I run an ARP-A command, I can see my ARP cache. Let's only focus on the first two entries, the first two lines. First one is the router and its corresponding MAC address, and the second one is 192.168.1.75, that's my attacker's machine, and its legitimate MAC address. I'll prove it to you on my attacker's machine, as you can see, same IP address and same MAC address. Cool. Now I'll start my MITM tool called EtherCap. I'll select my interface ETH0 to tell EtherCAP which network will be targeting. 
and now I need to run a quick host discovery to better understand my landscape and see which IP addresses are present on the network, as well as their corresponding MAC addresses. So it shouldn't take too long, I can already see a list of hosts available on this network. EtherCAP requires me to select two targets for the MITM attack, because the purpose of this demo is to show you how I am able to capture traffic between two devices. So I'll select the router 192.168.1.1 and set it as target 1, and then do the same with the Windows Server IP address and set it as target 2. Great, now I can start my poisoning attack. I'll select ARP poisoning and give it a few seconds. Now look closely what's happening on my Windows machine. Do you see the duplicate MAC address? The server is being forced to map the router's IP address to the attacker's MAC address. So instead of communicating with the router on the layer 2 network, it will forward all the traffic to the attacker. As an attacker, I will forward the traffic from the server to the router and the other way around, and simply listen in the background without intercepting or without tampering with the data. They'll never find out. Now I can open Wireshark to see what's happening between these two. Ideally, I would need to set filters for the source and the destination addresses, but there is not much traffic going on on my lab right now, so I'll just use the HTTP protocol filter for this demo. Let's select the ETH0 interface, apply the HTTP filter, and now, just as a proof of concept, I'll use a simple HTTP web form that doesn't really do much except for simulating an HTTP POST request in the clear without any end-to-end -end encryption. It's simulating a login attempt on a web page. Let's type our secret login credentials and let's pretend that I'm logged into some important application or portal. If we return back to Wireshark, we should have captured this request in clear text, and if we just dig a bit, we'll see the HTTP form parameters and their values right here. Administrator is the username, and after this comes the password. Pretty cool, right? But remember, in 99.99% .99 of all cases, these requests would be TLS or SSL encrypted, so you'll almost always need to combine this MITM attack with SSL strip attack or obtain the web server's private key to decrypt the traffic. And that was it, a live demo of Man in the Middle using ARP poisoning and cryptographic failures. I really hope you enjoy this one, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts and your suggestions for new videos. If you like my content, please subscribe to the channel for more updates, hit the like button, and share this video on your favorite social media, or just leave me a comment. Thanks again for watching, and remember to stay connected, stay safe, and protect what matters. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much.